Hey everyone, welcome. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I created this video to cover some of the tools and techniques I used to quickly rough in a car form using polygon modeling techniques. All this was done in Cinema 4D, but the techniques are not exclusive to Cinema 4D. All of them can be applied to other software like Maya, Modo, 3D Studio Max, Blender. There are a whole bunch out there. Um, I chose a 2012 Audi S5 for this. I don't build the entire car in the video. I just created a model that captured most of the design lines and overall form of the vehicle. This is so you can apply these techniques to another car or maybe even a concept of your own. The first thing I did was find blueprints or orthographic views of the vehicle. At a minimum, you want a direct side view. If you have a design of your own, you might only have a side view sketch with some front and rear three quarter renders. Next, I used Photoshop to trim up the blueprints and break out the side, front, top, and rear. I just cropped them and saved them to a folder. So let's get started with the model. I just dragged the images into the appropriate view, then I add a primitive cube to the scene and adjust the size to the overall dimensions of the chosen vehicle. Because the images won't show up in perspective, I use a cube to align the images. You can use Shift V to open the view panel in Cinema 4D, then adjust the transparency to help with visibility. In most cases, I start with a primitive disc to establish the size and shape of the wheel arches. If there's no disc, you can use the cap of a cylinder. I found using 18 to 21 segments gives a manageable amount of polygons to work with. If you use too many, there are just that many more points to keep track of. Now you can view the shape in subdivision mode. In Cinema 4D, you do this by adding a hypernervous modifier. In Maya, hit the number 3 key and Moto Shift Tab. You are now just subdividing the geometry. I usually model with a setting of about three subdivisions. I often flip between subdivision and the base mesh to check how the model looks. It is easier to model with the base mesh or it's sometimes called the control cage. Now I adjust the mesh to fit the opening by deleting the bottom view polygons and adjusting. In top view, I pull the points out to the width of the vehicle. I also turned off the grid to help see the image I need to reference. I then copy and paste a disc and move it to the rear. The shape might be a bit different, so adjust accordingly. I then connected the two objects to the R1. Now I use the knife tool to cut the bottom of the arches and delete the unwanted vertices. I spent a little more time adjusting the polygon layout so the character line from the rocker and rear bumper will flow into an edge on the wheel arch. I try and plan ahead and line edges up so they flow into one another. Make sure to adjust after you add or move lines. An important part of polygon modeling is to have nice polygon spacing and edge flow. I'll discuss this a little more later on. Next, I added some curvature to the wheel arches so they tuck onto the car. This adds a lot of form to this area of the vehicle. I use the front orthographic view to form the front of the arch. It's also a good idea to check it in perspective. I did notice a flat spot I didn't see in the direct front view. I just eyeballed the rest. This can always be adjusted later if necessary. At this point, I didn't do the back of the rear wheel arch. I'll focus on that later when I model in the rear bumper. Here I start to work on the body side of the vehicle. I extend or extrude the edges of the wheel arches. I did this because everything usually ends up flowing into the wheel arches, so it's where I like to start. In side view, I'll put, pull the edges up to the body side character line, then follow the same procedure in top view. It's a bit harder if you have no top view. Maybe you're modeling a concept with no established lines. If that's the case, you'll have to use your own judgment or ask the designer for some input. I also turn off the back face culling so the points don't show up in wireframe mode. Now I bridge between the two pieces and create the body side. I added some edge cuts so I can add some volume and form to the body side. In top view, try and add some curvature. No car has a flat body side. More curvature will make wheel arches seem wider, giving the car a better stance. I use edge weighting to hold the shape of the wheel arches and define a nice hard edge. In Cinema 4D, hold the period key and drag it. It weights from 1 to 10. For the hard edge to show, you have to break the fong shading. In Moto, just add edge weighting from 0 to 100%, and Maya use crease edge and hard edge. In order to see what the body side is doing, I use a reflective material so I can push and pull edges to form the body side. I create a new material and add an HDR or any image in the environment section of the material. Now I'd like to talk about edge flow. This is when I spend some time arranging edges so they follow character lines. You can see that I deleted a couple of edges and lined them up to flow into the wheel arches. There is no defined way to judge this. Depending on what your body side looks like, this will change. It may be interrupted by other body side features. Your edge flow is going to create the topology of your mesh and usually follow feature lines and flow around localized details. 
Right now I'm just blocking in the car so the topology should be pretty simple and not have a lot of detail. This is important because in the early stages you want to be able to move design elements and sculpt the surfaces. All cars are made with bigger surfaces to capture design and image. Then details like headlights, taillights, moldings, and cut lines are added later on. You can see here that I'm lining the rocker or light catcher edge up with the curve in the image. I'm going to use this as a starting point for the lower area. I then move the line above it to create the actual light catcher. The closer the lines are, the tighter the geometry will be, and I can pull it in to create the negative feature in the lower rocker area. I used the front view image to adjust the distance it needed to be pulled out. To define this edge, I used edge weighting and broke the shading. Here I must have paused the recording because I forgot to record the formation of the actual rocker area below the light catcher. You can see the difference in edges. I added a few more that follow the length of the rocker area and added another hard edge. <clears throat> These flow through the wheel arches. Again I used the side view to line them up. I then added another line to define the light catcher area a bit more. I then adjusted the curvature of the rocker as it rolls onto the vehicle. Don't forget to check the curvature of the wheel arches. Anytime you add lines that run through elements that had a defined curvature, the shape will change. The more lines I added flattened them out, so I had to reform the curve a bit. While building, it's okay to have triangles. Things aren't finished yet, and they will get resolved. To touch on that, if you need to have triangles or angongs, it's okay in my opinion. As long as they don't disrupt the final surface, they are fine. You might need them to terminate edges, so they can be kept. It's really up to you to decide. If this model is going to be used as a CG render and they don't disrupt the image, then nobody will ever know that they are there. Now I start to work on the body side and fenders. This takes a bit of experimenting, but like other elements, your topology or edges will flow with the surface. I did a couple of iterations of how I wanted the edges to flow, ended up adding a couple more that flowed down the body side and into the front fender. I also use edge weighting to adjust the radius from the fender arch to the lower light catcher area. I didn't like how some of the vertical edges curved as they flowed up the body side, so I straightened them a bit using the knife cut tool. This is where the reflective material comes in handy. I use it as a refer reference to form the body side. It's used to view the reflection so I can manually adjust the edges and points until I like the reflection. Again, the less points you have, the easier it is to do this. I go back and forth a bit, trying out different placements until it looks okay. I then cut a new path to straighten out the horizontal edges that helped flatten out some of the bumps I noticed. Next I started on the front fender and just mimicked the topology I used for the rear because the shapes are pretty similar. With some of the changes, <clears throat> make sure you go back and check your lines. I had to readjust the character line a bit after I moved some of the lines. Next I extended or extruded the edge on the character line just like I did with the wheel arches. I then moved it up and aligned it to match the belt line of the vehicle and side and top view. Towards the rear there is no defined edge, so I just used the theoretical trajectory of the curve. I then used edge weight to give it a hard edge like before. I then connected the belt line through the front fender and adjusted the surfaces a bit. I try to use edge weight instead of beveling the edges because you have less points to keep track of and for the initial roughing in they work fine. You can even give it a less weight and it will act like a visual bevel if you really want to see the radius. But radii are usually left to the very end of any design. Right now I'm not going to focus on the surfaces between the belt line and character line. I'll form that later because some of the lines I'll add to form the surface will have to flow to the front and rear of the vehicle. Now I repeat the process of extruding the edge and bring it up to match the A-pillar through the cant rail and down the C-pillar. In side view I cut an edge in the area I thought the A-pillar might touch down, so later I can run an edge loop up to it. I also adjusted the spacing of some of the vertical edges. The window opening can be made with very few points, so I like to move the points while in subdivision mode so I know the shape is correct. I had to redo some of the edge weighting because it broke when I moved some of the edges. Now I line it up in top view as well. Constrain the points to only move in <clears throat> x direction because if I start moving in y, the curve I created in side view will change. Now I form the actual pillar. Again, extrude the edge and line it up with the next defining line. Don't worry about the surface between these edges, it will get formed later. I do the same thing with the center line of the vehicle. Move, into, move it into position and then set all the points to zero on the x axis. Then I add a symmetry modifier and add the model to it. Creating the greenhouse is pretty straightforward. I divide the roof into a few sections using the edge slice tool and pull up on the row of faces to add curvature from front view. I had a few bumps in the rear windscreen surface so I adjusted them and then worked on the front windscreen. I added a bit of curvature in top view as well. The surface is not perfect but with a bit of tweaking it can be made smooth fairly easily. 
If you're using Moto, you can probably use a linear fallout tool to have a little more control over this area. Go to this next session in perspective view. It does seem like this was all modeled in this view, but it wasn't. This was on another screen. I think it gives a better view of how the model was formed. I did flip between top, rear, front, and side view off camera to accomplish this, just like I did earlier in the video. Next, I extruded the edge of the rear and pulled it to follow the profile of the vehicle in side view, and then lined up the end to follow the rear curve in top and rear view. I added some curvature to the rear wheel arches following the profile from the rear view image. Now I added an edge slice to the surface between the belt line and character line to help add some points at the end so I could form the corner a bit more. I continued it down the length of the surface because I liked where it ended on the rear so I could use it later in the front as well. Then I extended and moved some of the points around to follow the corner of the rear. I tried to establish a theoretical line in this area that could determine the corner, but this car has a nice defined line coming off the character line that flows down into the bumper, so I used that as reference. To start the bumper, I used an edge that lined up with the top of the bumper, then extruded it and formed it to follow the profile in top view, and then adjusted in side view. I used the same amount of polygons as a trunk edge has, so I could bridge between them. I established the bumper edge earlier when I formed the wheel arch, so that made it easier. If you are working with a design of your own, you may not have established lines, so it will be a lot harder to model this area. But if you understand what the surface is doing, you can figure it out. Try and ignore any detail and think of the broad surfaces and get that in first. You can always cut in detail later on and rework the topology. Now I bevel the surface to add some edges inside so I can form this area. This next part is a good example of ignoring all the details here. I didn't model license plate pocket or the taillights. I formed the theoretical surface that would be made before they were cut in. I reworked some of the edges to form the area and fine tuned some of the points to smooth out the surface a bit. I also added edge weight to establish some of the hard edges. I didn't model any of the surfaces in the exhaust or diffuser area. You can just extrude the edges down and attach to the wheel arch. This area would be best left for later on when you start adding in details because it would have some intricate edge flow and would need another level of subdivision to create them. I also created a zebra board texture. This is used mostly to evaluate surface continuity, but I tried it out to see where I might have some bumps in the surface. I adjusted a bit of the body side this way. It's not perfect, but it's helpful in making bumps visible so you can fix them. Now I added an edge slice down the center of the window. All glass panes are really just sections of big cylinders. This is far from that, but it adds some sections to this area and gives a feeling of volume for this early stage model. This also got rid of the triangles I had at the front and rear of the glass. I'll follow the same process for the front of vehicle as I did in the rear. Extrude off the edges and follow the profile inside view. I moved one of the edges on the body side back a bit so I could line it up with the A-pillar. This, this also started the cowl. At the A-pillar touchdown, I welded the points. Here it formed a triangle, but that's not a problem because I then added an edge loop down the cant rail from the A-pillar to the C-pillar, and it turned it around the corner to run into the deck lid spoiler area. That's a good example of how edge flow run throughout the body. I then deleted the edge weight I made to hold the edges in place. This adds some roundness to that surface and a smooth tr transition into the roof. I won't worry about any moldings around the glass and roof panel for now. Like I always do, I added edge weight to hold the hard edges for the cowl and added a loop in the middle to get rid of the triangles on the ends. Now I extend the center edges and follow the profile in side view. I also start to form the front fender arch and spent a little more time fixing the cowl. When forming the front of the hood, I also follow the curve of the belt line as it flows into the front, so this is done by pulling points towards a center line. I then follow the edges of the hood and headlight. Because the headlight is not really a graphic on the surface, but a separate element with unique geometry around it, I created my edge flow to follow the feature lines of the light and front grille. I blocked out the edges first, then started to add detail around the light. This took a bit of experimenting with edge cuts and different layouts until I got close to the shape I needed. I usually don't model in any cut lines now, but there is a little cut between the light and hood that made sense to model in now to help define that area. You can also add weight to vertices to help keep sharp corners. I then finished off the belt line with some edge weight to finish off the edge. I used reference images to help sculpt in the lower intake shape. It's always good to have multiple images of the car you're building. It's a bit harder if it's a design of your own or someone else's. The more reference, the better. I used a little edge weight to form the light catcher above the intake and then extruded the lower edge and formed it to follow the plan view shape of the lower bumper. I closed off the intake and beveled the surface to give me a nice consistent rim around the intake opening and added edge weight to the boundary edges. Although this is not a finished model, I think it is a good example of roughly getting the form and capturing the features of a design. If I took this further, I would start adding in secondary surfaces and details like the subtle surface changes in the hood and surface between the belt line and body side. 
I hope this was helpful in showing some of the techniques I use. So please look in the comments for a link where you can download this model to check out the geometry for your